Hello viewers, I welcome you all to today's talk on quantum mechanics. In this class, we'll be discussing about wave function, its properties and its physical significance. Erwin Schrodinger won Nobel Prize in Physics in the year 1933 for the discovery of new productive form of atomic theory, fundamentals of quantum mechanics. The development of quantum mechanics is a great intellectual achievement of the 20th century. It is one of the most sophisticated fields in physics. Quantum mechanics can explain the behavior of insulators, conductors, semiconductors and giant magnetoresistors. All these find applications in daily life. Quantum mechanics can explain the atomic theory, the various orbitals and energy levels in atoms. It could explain the quantization of light, the particle wave duality, the radiation of black body and its change in color with respect to temperature, the presence of poles and transport of poles and electrons in electronic devices. Quantum mechanics mm -hmm. could explain all the evolving new branches of physics. They are photonics, quantum electronics, nano and microelectronics, nano and quantum optics, quantum computing, quantum communication and cryptography, solar and thermoelectricity, nano electromechanical systems like this. We can list so many. Thus, many emerging technologies require the understanding of quantum mechanics. And hence, it is important that scientists and engineers and students understand quantum mechanics in a better way. At a degree level, we'll be studying the fundamentals of quantum mechanics. The objective of today's talk is to facilitate you all to learn about wave function, its physical significance and properties. Learning outcomes will be that learners will be able to explain the need of a wave function to describe matter waves, discuss the physical significance of wave function, outline various properties of wave function. We know sound waves could be described by Newtonian mechanical equations and electromagnetic waves could be explained by Maxwell's equation. In 20th century, De Broglie suggested matter waves for a moving particle like electron and photon and those matter waves, wavelength can be represented as lambda equal to h by p or lambda equal to h by mv. So Schrodinger felt if sound waves could be explained using Newtonian mechanical equations, electromagnetic waves could be explained by Maxwell's equations, then matter waves also should be explained using some wave equation. He realized the need of wave equation to describe matter waves. So he formulated a wave equation in 1926 that accurately calculated the energy levels of electrons in atoms and so it became very successful. Schrodinger received Nobel Prize for this mathematical formulation. Such mathematical description thus became the basis for quantum mechanics or wave mechanics. To formulate a mathematical equation, we need a wave equation to describe matter waves. To formulate the wave equation, we need a wave function. A wave function in quantum physics is a mathematical description of the quantum state of an isolated quantum system. You can consider an atom to be an isolated system. From that atom, if you particularly study about one electron, then that also becomes another isolated system as electrons can have quanta of energy 
the energy is fixed certain number of quantas so energy of the electron in every orbit is fixed that is why we say wave function is a mathematical description of quantum state depending on the energy of the electron the electron will be left at different orbits so the quantum state of an isolated quantum system so the wave function is a mathematical description describing the state of the electron in an atom schrodinger described the amplitude of this matter waves by a complex quantity psi of x y z and t known as wave function the other name for wave function is state of the system under observation if you have taken an electron as a isolated system under observation then this wave function describes the state of the system under observation now if you look at the psi of x y z t x y z represents the space and time represents the fourth dimension of this universe that's the simple wave function psi involves space and time schrodinger thus included the fourth dimension also into the wave function now let us look at the physical significance of the wave function by looking at the expression we can say that the wave function psi depends on the space and on time it characterizes the observable properties of wave nature of a particle of the system in the mathematical form so the psi will give you values of observable properties in terms of some mathematical expressions psi is a complex quantity that cannot be measured suppose you want to measure the thickness of this pen you can use crew cage and find out but psi what is its value it cannot be measured it's a complex quantity involving space and time next parameter what could be measured with the help of psi is particle density if psi is the amplitude of matter waves at any point in space then the particle density at that point may be proportional to psi squared psi represents amplitude means psi squared represents the particle density at that point psi also represents the charge density charge density is nothing but product of particle density psi squared by charge of that particle psi squared is the measure of probability density according to max born mod psi squared is equal to psi psi star this gives the probability of finding the particle in the state psi wave function psi represents the state of the particle so psi squared is equal to psi psi star the wave function psi the product of wave function psi and its complex conjugate gives you the probability of finding the particle in that state psi the probability of finding the particle per unit volume unit volume means its three dimensions are unity its width its thickness its height when it becomes unity then volume becomes unity so probability of finding the particle in such volume unit volume is given by psi squared the probability of finding the particle in a small volume dv equal to dx dy dz is given by psi squared dx dy dz so for unit volume probability density of finding the particle is psi squared means then the probability of finding the particle in a small volume dv is given by psi squared into dv suppose if you consider a big space and the probability of finding the particle in that space somewhere is given by triple integral of psi squared dx dy dz which is equal to 1 if you are sure to find out the particle in that region of space you carry out the triple integration of 
chi square dx dy dz and if that gives you the value 1 then this condition is known as normalization therefore total probability of finding the particle somewhere in space is given by triple integral of mod psi square dx dy d is equal to 1 or else triple integral of psi psi star dx dy d is equal to 1. This condition is known as normalization. Suppose after carrying out the triple integral of the expression, if you get 0, you are sure that you are not able to find the particle in that region of space. Now let us discuss about the properties of wave function. Wave function psi must be finite everywhere. No physical quantity can have infinite value. So the wave function psi must be finite or zero at any point in the space. You get zero when there is no particle. Okay, so it must have some finite value. Psi must be single value. Let us assume psi has more than one value at any point. It means that there is more than one value of probability of finding that particle at that point, which is not at all possible. So psi should be single value. In macroscopic world, if you want to find out a person, you can just search and tell that that person is in that particular room. You can't say that that person is in room number three, in room number eight, in room number 12. A person cannot be everywhere at the same time. Some particular value. What is the height of the person means you have to measure using tape and tell this is the height. That height of the person should have single value. If you say many values, then it has no meaning at all. So psi must be single valued. Next, let us consider one dimensional potential well. Here, the width of the well is as dimension L and it has two rigid walls, one at the zero, one at L. It is nothing but an atom. You are going to consider an electron inside the atom. So the atom diameter, one end of the diameter is here, the other end of the diameter is there. So the electron cannot by itself escape from the atom. So you see that end of the atom, it has potential V equal to infinity. So same way here also it has infinity. So this electron within the atom in any orbit it can freely move about. But when it meets the edge of the atom, there it finds potential is infinity. So it cannot, it cannot continue its journey. So the third condition is that the wave function that describes the motion of the particle inside the atom should be continuous. So it will be continuous within the diameter of the atom. So it goes like this continuously. But when it reaches the edge of the atom, it cannot be continuous. So it retraces its path. It comes here. It, again, this end of the edge of the atom so it cannot continue its journey. The journey becomes discontinuous and it retraces like this. But within these two walls, within the edges of the atom, the particle is free to move and the motion is continuous. Continuously it is moving from point to point. Only at the edge of the atom, the wave function becomes discontinuous. This implies that psi must be continuous for all values of x in the region except where potential is infinity. Thus, you have understood what is wave function, why it is needed to describe matter waves and what is the physical significance of wave function and some of its important properties. I hope you have enjoyed this learning. Thank you all.